Hi, I'm Pam Crook, and I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit today about a phrase I hear routinely, and it's this one. I'm doing social thinking, or I'm doing social thinking, where's the evidence? So I'm going to take just a few minutes and give you all a bit of a background in terms of what is social thinking and, um, and what's the evidence underlying what you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we talk about social thinking, it's actually not, you don't just do it, it's a methodology. So it's a whole bunch of things all put together. And actually, what you see um, when you go to a conference or, or maybe at your school, what you're seeing are you're seeing our little tools, our comic books, our games. But each one of those has a really solid research base. So um, I'm going to show you guys something uh, that we've developed, Michelle and I have developed over the past few years. And we're going to call it Research to Frameworks to Practice. So what you all see in practice is great, it's easy to use, but it comes with quite a few layers of evidence. So this is what you, you might find, um, and this is what your kids are attracted to, the comic books, you know, Social Detective, or Superflex, or maybe these fun little unthinkables, but um, these are only the start. That actually each one of these contribute to this big methodology, but they're based on something else. So I'm going to walk you through it really, really quickly. So this is what we're calling Research to Frameworks to Practice. It's our layers of evidence. And you can see there's six different layers. On the bottom, this is where the comic books and, and games are. And we're going to call those motivational developmental tools because they are quite motivating for our kids. But actually, again, quite, quite a few layers. So I'm going to start at the very tippy top. And this is the big heavy-duty research. This is where um, you know, universities are collecting a lot of data. We know that individuals with social learning issues, autism, Asperger's, or just language, language difficulties, they may struggle with things like theory of mind, joint attention. That's the research base. So that's where it all starts. Then what we do is we add like a framework to it. Really, it's just a way of interpreting the research so that it makes some sense. And then what we do is we start to say, OK, now that you understand where it comes from, now you can start using this information with your kiddos. So we're going to call this treatment frameworks. And these are things like social behavior mapping and uh, maybe the four steps of communication or the four steps of perspective taking. And then the next layer is these are um, strategies. And there's tons and tons of strategies. but. Most of you are familiar with social thinking vocabulary like think with your eyes, body in the group, brain in the group. So lots and lots. And then we get into individual activities. And they're probably um, endless, thousands, millions of those. Those are, those are developed by you, the teacher, the practitioner, where you've just taken some of our work and you just come up with activities. And then finally, the very bottom, which is the motivational developmental tools. That's where we started, so the comic books. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a quick example of how that might look because we have all of our motivational developmental tools they are divided by ages. So we've got the little kid, really little kid, got the medium kid, and then we've got the older. So here's how it might look if we had you know, any one of these. I'll start with social detective, really common. So here we have the research to frameworks to practice and we have our little tool on the side. But really when you're using social detective, you aren't just using social detective, you're starting with an activity like, really common, follow my eyes to find the prize. It's something teachers use all the time. But in reality, when you do that activity, you're working on thinking with your eyes, which is one of our vocabulary, social thinking vocabulary, which is when you work on thinking with your eyes, you're working on the four steps of communication, which is part of the I laugh model, which is, here's what you're working on, join attention, inferencing and perspective taking. So every time you pick up that comic book, you're actually working on these research-based concepts. Another example, Superflex, you're working on self-awareness, perspective taking, self-control. Um, and a final example for our, our We Thinkers series, which is for our four to seven or eight-year-olds, if you're working on smart guess, you're actually working on joint attention, inferencing, or prediction. So the reason we wanted to set this up and, and, and tell all of you guys about it is because words really matter. If you're saying, I'm doing social thinking, um, it's hard for people to understand what you're actually doing. Because there are so many parts. And you, as you just saw, there are six different layers. So instead, what we want to encourage people to do is 
use phrases like this. I'm using so, uh, superflex in my classroom. It's part of the social thinking methodology. So people start to understand, oh, I'm just doing a piece of it. Or our, our social emotional curriculum in the school, we've decided to use the We Thinker series. Or our district has infused social thinking into the PBIS framework. All a bunch of you know, letters here that schools use often. But it makes it more clear to administrators, to researchers, to parents, exactly what you're doing as opposed to I'm just doing social thinking. If you guys want to um, take a deeper dive into the research to frameworks to practice, we actually have a very, very extensive article. Not for everyone, but for those of you who want to get into the nitty gritty detail, it's on our website in the research section. It's also um, on the front page. Thank you very much.